Hi, I'm John Debney, Senior Vice President of Delta Waterfowl. It's getting to be that time of year where ducks are coming back to the prairies. We want to describe what we think is a really important concept for duck hunters to know about, and that's carrying capacity. And if you think way back, probably to your seventh or eighth grade science class, you probably heard this term. And carrying capacity, in the simplest of terms, is the what are the habitat needs of an individual species? When you think about white-tailed deer, it's how much food they uh, have to get through the winter, as, as, a, as an example. When we talk about breeding ducks, we know that what happens on the prairies or in the breeding grounds each spring really determines how many ducks we're going to see as hunters in the fall. When we think about breeding ducks and carrying capacity, it really boils down to one thing and that's the number of small wetlands available to ducks on the landscape. So we know small wetland numbers are determined by two things, really. One, how many are physically there, either they're there or they've been drained. Or number two, how many are be able to hold water because of precipitation. Now, when we talk about breeding duck carrying capacity, it boils down to the number of small wetlands out on the landscape. And that's because ducks are territorial. Now, I'm going to just warn you, art was not my backgrounds, but I just want to show you, give you a crude example. When you have lots of little itty bitty wetlands on the landscape versus one big wetland over here, the way ducks distribute in the prairies is you'll have a pair of mallards here, a pair of mallards here, a pair of mallards here, a pair of mallards here. You'll have a pair of gadwall here, a pair of gadwall here, a pair of gadwall here, pair of gadwall here. Pair of pintail, pair of pintail, pair of pintail, pair of pintail, pair of shovelers. So what you see here is that these small wetlands can host really high densities of breeding ducks. If we didn't have all these little ones and the ducks were forced to come over here and use this bigger pond, you'd have one pair of mallards, one pair of pintail, one pair of gadwall, and one pair of shovelers. And so you look, four little itty bitty wetlands on the landscape are going to hold four times as many ducks as one big one. So when I first started at Delta and was a, a duck hunter that didn't know a lot about the biology of ducks, I was told 10 one acre wetlands will support 10 times as many breeding ducks as one 10 acre wetland. And that's how this phenomenon plays out on the landscape. Now here's why. As I said earlier, ducks are territorial. If another mallard tries to come in and use this pond, another pair of mallards, the drake will run them off and defend this pair territory. And so that's why having all these little itty bitty, teeny tiny, especially temporary and seasonal wetlands early in the spring is so important to breeding ducks. They can space out, they can be in high densities, and that's how we have high numbers of breeding ducks. If we're reduced to just having a few big wetlands on the landscape, we have far fewer uh, breeding pairs available on that landscape. So when we think about breeding duck biology on the prairies, it all starts with these prairie ponds, providing the highest amount of carrying capacity and the highest number of breeding pairs. So once we have all these ducks back in the spring, and let's hope we're in a situation like this where we've got lots of small wetlands full of water and high breeding pairs, then we have to transition to think about production. Because what we need is we need the habitat in place to attract these pairs, and then we have to address the factors that limit production. As Dr. Frank Rohr told you, almost everything that happens that changes population sizes in ducks happens up here during the nest, nesting season. So we know that nest success matters a great deal. We know that brood survival means a great deal. And we know hen survival means a great deal. And if you just chunk those three vital rates that happen up on the prairies, that really determines what's going to happen in terms of what we see in juveniles in the fall. Now obviously if it's dry, we're going to have poor production. We don't have the birds in the landscapes they need to be. The habitat isn't available. That's certainly going to influence it. But also these changes in these vital rates of nest success, 
brood survival and hen survival really make a difference in the number of juveniles and young ducks that fall south each fly south each fall. So as duck managers on the prairies, our job is for you is to make sure we're doing one, making sure we're taking care of the habitat to provide the carrying capacity, and number two, address limits to production so we produce as many ducks as we possibly can for the fall flight.